and her mother uh, actually was attracted to him as well. And he said when Aaliyah would go to sleep, that he would, uh, This now this is what he said. What's up, I'm Aaliyah, and if it's happening in entertainment, you can best believe it's happening on E. Oh, it's a lot of work, it really is. You know, now that I have, you know, dual careers, it's double the workload, but I'm really enjoying it. You know, this is what I've wanted since I was a little girl. And First thing he confided in me about was about his own He told me that his sister um, him when they were children. The unfolding narrative surrounding the resurgence of allegations against Robert R. Kelly and his impending aggravated essay case has taken an even more disconcerting turn. In a recent interview, accuser Lisa Van Allen delivered a startling revelation regarding Kelly's purported connection with the late singer Aaliyah. To be more precise, the focus shifted to Aaliyah's mother, Diane Houghton. He said, he said that he would go in the living room and him and her would do so on the couch while Aaliyah was sleeping in the bedroom. Accuser Lisa Van Allen in the latest development has stepped forward with a new assertion, claiming that the embattled R&B singer R. Kelly was involved in an S relationship not only with Aaliyah, but also with the late singer's mother. Speaking on Vlad TV, Allen alleges that after Aaliyah had fallen asleep, Kelly would reportedly engage in S acts with the deceased singer's mom. He actually stayed at their home in Detroit and her mother actually was S attracted to him as well, Allen said. When Aliyah went to sleep, he would go into the living room and he and she would do S acts on the couch while Aliyah was asleep in the bedroom. Lisa Van Allen shared her experiences of S abuse at the hands of the Grammy award-winning singer, played a significant role in Lifetime's surviving R. Kelly series. Alongside Kelly's ex-wife, Andrea, Allen detailed the disturbing accounts of S.A. control and manipulation they endured. I felt special. I actually thought that I was his girlfriend, you know, I was li living up there at that point. We were together all the time. You know, I had no reason to question that we weren't. According to Allen, Kelly allegedly confessed to his relationship with Aaliyah's mother when she was just 17. In a vulnerable moment, he also shared with her that he had experienced A as a child at the hands of his older sister. Allen further disclosed that Aaliyah and Kelly shared a strong bond, explaining the secrecy surrounding the details of their relationship until Aaliyah's untimely death in August 2001. The first thing he confided in me about was about his own sex. He told me that his sister um, him. Moreover, Allen affirmed the long-standing rumor that Kelly married a 15-year-old Aaliyah, deliberately falsifying the marriage certificate to claim she was 18. This was purportedly done to evade potential legal repercussions had their marriage been discovered. That she was pregnant, that they did um, doctor up the a marriage certificate so she would say that she was 18. However, all these allegations were denied by R. Kelly himself reportedly. In response to Lisa Van Allen's claims, sources close to R. Kelly have vehemently denied any S involvement with Aaliyah's mother, Diane Houghton. According to TMZ, Kelly insists that his relationship with Houghton was strictly NS and he views Van Allen's assertions as a desperate attempt for attention, accusing her of smearing his name for personal gain. I'm very tired of all of the uh, lies. I've been hearing things and, you know, and seeing things on the blogs and, you know, I'm just, I'm just tired. The controversy deepens with Barry Hankerson, Aliyah's uncle and co-founder of Blackground Records, suggesting that Aliyah's mother was aware of the romantic relationship between Aliyah and R. Kelly. Hankerson, in an interview with Dr. Oz, claimed that while he was ignorant of the alleged A, he believes his sister knew more than was previously thought. Yes, I think my sister knew a lot more than what we thought she knew. Hankerson, who signed Aaliyah to Blackground Records at the age of 12, introduced her to Kelly, who produced her debut album. The secret marriage in 1994, when Aaliyah was 15, has since been annulled by her parents. Moreover, in the courtroom, disturbing testimonies have surfaced, including a former backup dancer's account of witnessing R. Kelly S.A. Aaliyah on a tour bus in 1993 when she was 13 or 14 years old. This dancer, identified as Angela, also alleges that Kelly S.A. her when she was between 14 and 15 years old. As the legal proceedings continue, the complex web of allegations, denials, and revelations surrounding R. Kelly's relationships and actions continue to unravel. However, singer Aaliyah was everyone's favorite in her time, but her bad luck was behind her, and it was revealed by Damon Dash. R. Kelly's actions came under scrutiny, especially with the recent release of the Lifetime documentary, Surviving R. Kelly. 
This documentary sheds light on R. Kelly's alleged marriage to an underage Aaliyah in 1994, which followed his pursuit of a S relationship with her and purportedly impregnating her. Everybody was getting at Aaliyah, bro. Right. She was like, she was like, you know, she'll go to dinner with a nigga, but she wasn't going to just be smashing. So that was like the big deal. Like, And then Dame Dash is publicly criticizing Jay-Z for his prior collaborations with R. Kelly on their joint albums, The Best of Both Worlds in 2002, and its sequel, Unfinished Business in 2004. During an appearance on the That's F Up podcast, the co-founder of Rockefeller Records reflected on Jay-Z's working relationship with R. Kelly. Notably, R. Kelly had married a 15-year-old Aaliyah in 1994 when he was 27 years old. Dame Dash who had a relationship with Aaliyah approximately a year before her tragic passing in 2001, expressed his disapproval of Jay-Z's decision to collaborate with R. Kelly. I just couldn't believe he did a project with R. Kelly knowing that he'd R my girl, Dash shared. I was like, just don't put my name on that. I don't want no money from that. If it is, put it to Aaliyah Foundation. Like they did this S twice, Dame added, referring to Jay and Kelly's second collab project. During the interview with co-host Alejandro Gonzalez Charles, Damon Dash was asked for his thoughts on the R. Kelly situation, particularly in light of R. Kelly's recent conviction for T, racketeering, and CP. In response, Damon Dash did not mince words, stating, I think he's where he belongs. He also hinted at having first-hand knowledge of the harm R. Kelly had caused Aaliyah. Yeah, I think he's where he belongs. I mean, I, I, you know, I know Aaliyah, so I know what he did. Uh -huh. I mean, See? I mean, like, you know, I don't, I don't, I can't be objective about that. Okay. When asked whether he had ever confronted R. Kelly about his treatment of Alia, Damon revealed that Alia had personally asked him to leave it alone completely. He also confirmed that he and R. Kelly had appeared in the same music video, although Alia had requested that they not engage in any confrontations or share scenes with the bump and grind mm -hmm. singer. So that's the thing that people would be like when Jay, when Jay was doing videos with him, I was being in the video, but she, I'd be like, go what do you want me to do? And she's like, don't start nothing, just don't be in no shots with him. However, after knowing the truth, Damon expressed his discomfort with the fact that Jay-Z had chosen to collaborate on an album with R. Kelly, the best of both worlds. He also recounted a time when both he and Jay-Z had pursued a romantic interest in Aaliyah, stating that she had shown interest in both of them. As a result, Damon noted that he didn't want any part of the project. I'm not there as an executive producer, just don't put my name on that. I don't want no money from that. If it is, put it towards the Alaya Foundation. Moreover, Damon showed his concerns that it raised his eyebrows when he came to know that Jay-Z was thinking, and he and Damon were in some sort of competition to win her heart first. I didn't look at her like that because she was like a tomboy, Dash started. She was little to me, but then one time I guess we had the same bookkeeper, and I walked past every time I saw her, she looked different. She had different looks every time, and I was like, who the F is that? Damon Dash mentioned that he put forth his best effort in pursuing Aaliyah, only to later discover that Jay-Z had also shown interest in her. He expressed his initial frustration upon learning this, saying, I wasn't aware that Jay was also interested. He mentioned that the situation became complicated as they were both vying for her attention. Eventually, they both encountered each other, and the outcome was a lengthy and complex story. Aaliyah, dated her. What's a legacy? coolest girl in the whole world you know too good for this world damon went on to explain that many people in their circle were pursuing Aliyah. he mentioned that she would agree to have dinner with someone but she wasn't inclined to engage in intimate relationships casually the primary focus for many was figuring out who could establish a meaningful connection with Aliyah. everybody was getting at Aliyah, bro he continued she'll go to dinner with a n but she wasn't gonna just be smashing so that was the big deal like who can get with Aliyah? The music executive went on to disclose that Jay-Z had become noticeably resentful once he discovered that Damon was pursuing Aaliyah. Damon explained that he had some feelings about it, but it was common knowledge. People tried to act like he was really involved with her. Although he was sending gifts and making romantic gestures, he was courting her. So they were both putting in a lot of effort, and we coincidentally found themselves in the same house on the 4th of July. So we were both going hard. And we, right. and we ended up in the same house for Fourth of July. So we, were, for some reason, this, this day. Wait I a minute, you, Jay, and Aaliyah ended up in the same house. Yeah. 
It was a situation where Alia's attention might sway toward him one moment and then toward me the next. Damon emphasized his consistency in his pursuit of the singer, saying, But that particular week I was on top of my game. Everything I said was witty, you know what I mean? He recollected a specific incident, saying, I remember coming downstairs and Jay-Z had this sigh. His friends were teasing him and making jokes. However, it seems like Jay-Z won the game and he has reportedly also dated Aaliyah. This also caught fans' attention slash one of them wrote. When Aaliyah was interviewed back in 1997, she stated that she still admired R. Kelly. There were never any signs of trauma coming from her when asked about her alleged marriage with Robert. Additionally, from what Dame is saying, Aaliyah never said anything pertaining to what he believes R. Kelly did to Aaliyah. Right before she died, she was jamming to R. Kelly and Jay-Z's song, Not Guilty, at her listening party. Another one added, I wish she would have gone with her gut and never got on that plane and wait for another flight. I legit loved her music and her dancing. When she died, I was so effing sad and like, no, why her lord, why? Rip Alia, she was such an amazing singer. One more person penned her emotions as, I'm surprised at all the comments stating R. Kelly was railroaded when there was an insurmountable amount of evidence against him. It's disappointing that individuals only started to speak up when the S hit the fan. Imagine how many women and men could have been spared the trauma if R. Kelly was sat down a long time ago. And yet Jay-Z collaborated with R. Kelly, which also makes people think that what Kelly did to Aaliyah, Jay-Z was also involved. Aaliyah tragically passed away at the young age of 22 in 2001 due to a plane crash that occurred while she was leaving the Bahamas. At the time, she was in the midst of shooting the music video for Rock the Boat on the Island. The crash, which took the lives of Aaliyah and eight other passengers, was attributed to the aircraft being overloaded. Out of the Bahamas tonight, authorities have confirmed that R&B singer and actress Aaliyah is among eight people killed in a plane crash. In the years that have followed her untimely death, Aaliyah's music has continued to resonate with audiences and garner support from fans worldwide. Aaliyah's remarkable achievements in her career include three American Music Awards, two MTV Video Music Awards VMAs, and five Grammy nominations. Yo, <laughs> this is a shock. This is a big shock. I just started, um, Film and Anne Rice's Queen of the Damned in Australia and my brother and I Anyways, the former backup singer for R. Kelly even attested to witnessing a then 27-year-old Kelly engaging in S activity with the then 15-year-old Aaliyah on a tour bus. This revelation has rekindled the controversy and shed new light on the troubled dynamics within Rockefeller and between its co-founders Damon Dash and Jay-Z. Do you think you would have married her one day? Yeah. As you hear all this other stuff in the news with R. Kelly, how, do you, how does that make you feel about him? We talked about it up. For an extended period, the prevailing narrative surrounding R. Kelly and Alaya took a different and deeply troubling shape. Instead of highlighting the A nature of their relationship, it was often framed as a romantic love story. Um, what is the deal with you and R. Kelly? Are you all married or not? No, I'm not married. Um, Robert's doing his thing, I'm doing my thing. He's a great producer, a great artist who I do admire. Official records reveal that Aaliyah and Kelly were married in an unlawful ceremony in 1994 when Aaliyah was a mere 15 years old, while Kelly was 27. This controversial union was swiftly annulled, with both parties vehemently denying its existence. And um, there's, there's nothing left yet. However, in the aftermath of Alia's tragic death in 2001, accounts from her friends, family, and former boyfriends began to surface, painting a grim picture of the alleged A she endured at the hands of R. Kelly. Furthermore, with the emergence of news about Kelly's sustained A relationships and the exposure of his purported S cult in 2017 during the Me Too movement, discussions surrounding what transpired between him and Aaliyah have now ignited a widespread moral outrage that was conspicuously absent just a few years ago. Theirs wasn't a love story that defied age, writes journalist Kathy Iandoli in her 2021 biography Baby Girl, better known as Aaliyah. It was a tragedy that Aaliyah in endured and somehow moved past to become an icon in her own right without him. Even back in 1994, it should have been glaringly evident that the significant age difference and power dynamics between Aaliyah and Kelly posed a serious risk to her well-being. Aaliyah, just 15 years old and a minor, was under the professional guidance of Kelly, who was 27 at the time. Any romantic involvement between them would likely have been detrimental to Aaliyah.
The burden of responsibility for such a relationship clearly rested with the adult in the equation, which was R. Kelly. Uh, Alia, uh, you was uh, 15 when you uh, began to, uh, to sing. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's when the first album came out. However, in the aftermath of their relationship, including events before Kelly's 2006 arrest for the possession of CP and the subsequent rehabilitation of his career, their secret marriage was often sensationalized as a celebrity scandal, rather than being recognized for the concerning circumstances it represented. Tragically, R. Kelly's A of Aliyah was sometimes unjustly framed as something shameful about Aliyah herself, rather than acknowledging the culpability of Kelly. R. Kelly and Aliyah being not only involved but potentially married uh music writers i knew were put off Aliyah made deliberate efforts to distance herself from kelly after news of their marriage became public she ceased collaborating with him embracing a new musical direction with missy elliott and timbaland in the seven years between her separation from kelly and her untimely passing Aliyah tactfully downplayed the incident whenever it was brought up in public so the radio station want to dedicate that song to the ex-boyfriend this wasn't a personal ex. thing was it uh, <laughs> this wasn't a personal experience for me but okay. it's something we call yeah i'm sure However, in an ironic twist, the story of what R. Kelly did to Aaliyah became intertwined with her public image. As her star continued to rise, her youth and innocence became central to how the world perceived her S, and her S, in turn, played a significant role in what endeared her to her audience. So today, two decades after her tragic death, Discussions about Aliyah force us to grapple with the challenge of separating Kelly A from Aliyah's image and confront the question of whether it's even possible to do so. Aliyah's journey into the music industry began at a remarkably young age. At just 12 years old, she had already been fervently pursuing her musical ambitions for years. Her early experiences included appearing on Star Search at the tender age of 10 and performing alongside her aunt Gladys Knight during one of Knight's Las Vegas concerts when she was a 11. By the time she reached 12, it was evident to those around her, including her manager Barry Hankerson, that she was ready to consider creating her own album. R. Kelly shared this sentiment, and in 1993, when Aaliyah was only 14, they embarked on the production of her debut album, Age Ain't Nothing But a Number. You loved her? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you uncomfortable talking about her? Um. Not really uncomfortable, but just very respectful. This debut album achieved considerable success, debuting at Numdar 24 on the Billboard charts in May 1994. It also earned Alia nominations at prestigious events like the American Music Awards and the Soul Train Awards. While many critics believe they understood what made the album so exceptional, the common consensus was that R. Kelly played a pivotal role in its success. Alia's Back and Amp Fourth is a fixture in the Pop Top 5 partly because of R. Kelly. He not only produced and wrote Back and Amp Fourth, but he also does the rapping, explained the LA Times in 1994. Getting airplay for a single by a new artist is tough, unless it features R. Kelly doing everything but the lead vocals. Fans love just about anything he does, and Back and Amp. Fourth is the next best thing to a new R. Kelly single. Even after Aliyah had established herself and her voice, and everyone knew what an Aliyah album sounded like, Age Ain't Nothing But A Number still sounded strikingly like an R. Kelly album, rather than an Aliyah album. It was basically like listening to an R. Kelly album, but with a little girl singing. Album sequencer Jeff Sledge told Vibe in 2014, Obviously the subject matter was an S, but the overall production and the sound of the record was like a Robert album as a little girl. Kelly seems to have been intent on presenting Aaliyah to the world as a miniature version of himself, and not just in the way her album sounded. In Ayondali's Baby Girl, Aaliyah's stylist Kimya Warfield Range recalls that Kelly insisted Aaliyah be dressed like him for her videos, in an oversized sweatsuit that would reveal her midriff with dark sunglasses. He also produced a leather vest for her, a miniature version of the vest he wore on his album covers and tours, with a license plate for Illinois, Kelly's home state, on the back. Range didn't feel the vest particularly fit Aliyah's look, but both Aliyah and Kelly insisted she wear it. He was the influencer, Kimya said. They already had an image set for her. R. Kelly's influence on Aliyah extended beyond just her music videos and album production. 
In the period following the release of her album, they started to adopt similar clothing styles for their public appearances. In fact, they often dressed alike when they were seen out and about, and they were frequently photographed together in public. They made it a point to let everyone know they were the best of friends. All of these actions didn't go unnoticed, and the tabloid media began to take notice, raising a collective eyebrow at their seemingly close relationship. The two are obviously close, snarked YSB magazine in 1994. It's no wonder they were thought to be cousins, not. Everybody seems to think that y'all are either girlfriend and boyfriend or cousins or friends, said Sherry Carter on BET's video Soul Gold when Aaliyah and R. Kelly appeared in matching outfits. Let's get the record straight. In December 1994, Vibe magazine published the marriage certificate between R. Kelly and Aaliyah, confirming what had previously been a rumor. Over the nearly three decades since their clandestine and illegal marriage, there has been substantial reporting on the events that transpired, particularly highlighted in the explosive 2019 Lifetime docuseries Surviving R. Kelly. Journalist Jim DeRogatis, who initially broke the story of Kelly's child S-tape in 2000, has been reporting on R. Kelly and his actions ever since. All right, Al, thank you. On Wednesday, a shocking development. Police arrested a popular singer on child <laughs> charges. According to Smith's account, Aaliyah returned to her family in Detroit the day after the wedding and disclosed what had transpired. Her family assumed responsibility for the situation, and on September 29, 1994, the marriage was officially annulled. Aaliyah conveyed her desire to never see Kelly again, and her family took steps to ensure her well-being. Well, to let all my fans know, that I have a right, you know, they support me, right. so I'm here to let them know I'm not married. Um, that was a rough time for me. At the time, it appears that the family's understanding was that the marriage, while clearly an ill-advised decision, was essentially the result of two young individuals who cared for each other getting caught up in a difficult situation. Damon Dash, who was in a relationship with Aaliyah at the time of her tragic passing, then shared in Surviving R. Kelly that Aaliyah was too emotionally scarred by her relationship with Kelly to confide in him fully. She could only reveal limited details. That dude was a bad man. You can further take an idea when Kelly's former personal assistant, Demetrius Smith, provided consistent accounts in various sources, including Soulless, Surviving R. Kelly, his own book, The Man Behind the Man, and during Kelly's 2021 trial that Aliyah and Kelly married because Aliyah became pregnant. Right now I'm producing a um, very talented uh, lady, <laughs> young lady. She's 14, uh, Aaliyah. Smith recounted that Aaliyah contacted Kelly while he was on tour in Miami, expressing her suspicion of being pregnant. After consulting with his lawyer and accountant, they advised Kelly to marry Aaliyah. At Kelly's 2021 trial, a Jane Doe testified that Kelly proceeded with the wedding to legally grant Aaliyah permission for an abortion, as it would have otherwise required her parents' consent. Yeah, Vinny, you know, I think I don't think that's going to work because the we have The point so or the cross-examination? Any S contact between R. Kelly and Aaliyah in 1994 would have constituted, at the very least, statutory R. Yet, even after the publication of their marriage certificate made it evident that something inappropriate had transpired between them, the media largely approached the story with, at best, a tone of an unconventional love story, and at worst as a judgment on Aaliyah's so-called Lolita image. In essence, it was as if the young girl who sang Age Ain't Nothing But a Number was being blamed for the situation she found herself in. Often, the story was reduced to a sensational celebrity scandal, something to gossip about and make pop culture references to. It's important to note that R. Kelly had written, produced, and dressed Aaliyah for the song Age Ain't Nothing But a Number, which played a significant role in creating Aaliyah's beautiful pseudo-Lolita image in the first place. When the song became associated with a scandal, the responsibility for it seemed to unfairly shift onto Aaliyah. And now, when Kelly's alleged relationship with her mother has been exposed, everything is messed up. They're working me to death, so there's no time to like have some fun, but um, I'm just glad to be here. It's a beautiful place. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.